I've never seen fire like that. It didn't matter what we did with it, we just couldn't seem to contain it. Tonight, World in Action asks disturbing questions about the familiar places we all use. Tragedy at a factory. High drama at a big name supermarket. We ask who should make sure they're safe and just how safe are they? You just cannot believe a shop like that would go up in flames so quickly. Soho Fire Station, Central London. Blue Watch start work. The incidents they'll deal with bring into sharp focus a debate simmering in the fire brigades and across four government departments. Who can be best trusted to look after all our interests in the line of fire? I remember looking at one man who just looked me straight in the eye in complete shock and crumbled in front of me and seemed to be on fire. And I had to um, try and put him out. And it's at that point that I went out onto the ledge because um, it was more the image of this man's eyes just vacantly looking at me. Three weeks ago, Trevor learnt at first hand what happens when fire strikes. He was one of 30 people trapped above ground in the blazing Dream City Cinema in Clerkenwell, London. 11 people died. There was absolutely nothing I could do for my life by remaining burning and with people all around me on a ledge that was tilting. And at that point, I um, looked up to the sky and prayed to my uh, parents to give me help. The cinema had been masquerading as a private club. It should have had a license and been open to inspection by the fire brigade. It didn't, and the lack of proper fire escape made the death toll worse than it need have been. It was a, a, a howling that I'll never forget because it was a, a sound of resignation of life. It wasn't a scream, it was just a deep howling of people being burnt alive. And I then got my hand down by my side and I breathed in and I just stepped off and went down. And I remember going down thinking, is this all there is to dying? And seeing the fire just roaring on the first floor. But fortunately at this point, I don't remember the point of impact. Two weeks later, that terrible lesson has already been forgotten. An undercover team from Westminster Council has evidence of severe fire risks at an unlicensed sex show in Soho. Now they're about to raid it. Westminster City Council. Executing a warrant of unlicensed public entertainment. It's a constant war between the licensing authority and the owners. A fast buck becomes an even faster one if you don't have to spend money making people safe. And we're closing the premises now. This is supposed to be the fire escape from the rear of the basement itself, the actual staircase itself is completely obstructed with combustible material and in the emergency you wouldn't get out of there as per required. What kind of fire risk is all that rubbish on the floor? An extremely on? high fire risk. With smoke content in here it would be impassable within mm. a matter of seconds and it's a smoke that kills in the event of a fire and with the flames, before the, with the staircase burning through, you'd probably find that would go through in about a minute. It's not just sleazy clubs which cause problems. A week ago, the Blue Watch from Soho Fire Station carried out an unannounced raid on an upmarket West End cinema. It's part of a large entertainment complex in the heart of London. They'll find a dozen breaches of fire safety rules. We've got lighting out on the escape route. That's relatively safe, but mainly it's the fire doors so far. Often we find problems that are just merely overlooked by people or things that people don't realise. Everything's put there for a purpose, be it smoke control or fire control. 
So, uh, yes, yeah, relatively serious. On a scale of 1 to 10? A scale of 1 to 10. Well, I'm going to put it as 10 because yeah, everything they do is wrong. There's little comfort for the management. From your point of view, there's a couple of points. Your projection room, mm -hmm. no, no, no smoke inside displayed. We what about your emergency lighting? Is that tested? No. It's not tested at not all? Not that I know. Right. Is there somebody other than yourself that we could ask about this? Um, general manager during the week. During the week. Alex Fenner. Right, well, we'll come back during the week. In the aftermath of the Clerkenwell disaster, there were many voices calling for tighter legislation. Some wanted the fire brigade to have more power to close down unsafe premises. But the truth is that things are moving in a very different direction. A secret battle is underway to reduce the influence of the fire brigades on the way new buildings are designed and the way public buildings are used. In one corner, Terry Crafer, an independent fire consultant, He's helped develop Whitehall proposals to cut the firefighters out of the building process. Well, there's obviously a battle going on. There's, on the one side, there's a, an enlightened attitude that we, we should get rid of these old, very old in some cases, regulations which hamper people and are extremely costly and holding back the recovery. And on the other hand, uh, there are vested interests. Um, I mean, there's a real boom industry in, in marketing fire, uh, fire safety equipment. In the other corner, the fire service, fighting to retain its grip on building rules. It appears that there has been a very powerful lobby behind the scenes to remove the fire service from the fire safety equation. What we believe will happen, and what we are determined will not happen, is that the Fire Precautions Act of 71 will be repealed and that the enforcement of that legislation and the involvement in it of the fire service will be removed from them. The public expect us to be involved in that process and quite rightly so. At the end of the day, of course, we are the people who will fight the fires and have to go into those buildings to rescue people if they're trapped. The people who fight the fires should enforce the codes. As a building goes up, important decisions are made about its safety features. As it goes into use, a fire certificate is issued by the local fire brigade. Developers have to satisfy a long list of local officials and Whitehall departments. The government wants to cut down the red tape. What we're seeking to ensure is that there is one government body, body perhaps, which actually is responsible for looking after a fire uh, legislation, and also seeking to ensure that there is an overlap and duplication between the bodies that enforce that legislation. An influential group of private advisers has been pressing the government to hand over the fire brigade's safety powers to the Department of Environment. It's angered fire chiefs who've had a continuing dispute with the Department of Environment over the safety of new buildings. Today, rising from the ashes of the massive fire at Chichester, questions about the safety of the design of such superstores. A multi-million pound fire at Sainsbury's in Chichester just before last Christmas. A small explosion in a storeroom triggered a blaze which destroyed the entire building. I heard two little horns going by, so I turned on the radio and the first thing I heard was uh, requesting 15 pumps, which uh, made my hair curl on the back a little bit and uh, I realised that there was a problem. I looked around and I saw the plume of smoke. Sort of white smoke coming from the fire and I, I personally thought it was a small fire, but then there was the most enormous explosion and great clouds of black smoke came pouring out. It was, it was frightening. The fire went from initial call to almost total involvement in less than 30 minutes. That is a phenomenally fast fire development. It wasn't supposed to happen. The storeroom was separated from the shopping area by a firewall meant to hold back flames for two hours. It lasted just 20 minutes. Instead of a contained, localised fire, the entire building was ablaze. We repeatedly sent in crews to hold the fire against that wall with spray, with spray jets and so on to keep it back. And they kept coming out and saying, the fire's got above us, it's, it's moving, we can hear it moving through the ceiling. And we kept saying, no, 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 you must be wrong, go back in, go back in. In the roof above the sales floor was a giant empty space which allowed fire to race through the store. This was a controversial building, 
Five recommendations from the fire brigade to install sprinklers and other safety devices went unheeded. And the Department of Environment had also overruled local laws requiring fire breaks in the roof. In the last couple of years, the experience has been that the developers have uh, made appeals to the Department of the Environment, and the Department of the Environment have upheld those appeals. So despite our best efforts to enforce what we regard as sensible fire precautions in these types of buildings, uh, the efforts have been overridden. All we have to do is to provide fire precautions which are reasonable having regard to the circumstances of the case. And this seems to trouble the fire brigades who seem to want belt, braces, cello tape, safety pins, sealing wax, everything. At Soho Fire Station, Blue Watch are responding to their first fire alarm. A 999 call sends them out to a back road close to Oxford Street in London's West End. When they arrive, it's apparently a routine job, but appearances can be deceptive. There's a bin of light. It's one of these little wheelie bin things that everyone throws every bit of rubbish they can find in. We had a relatively serious small fire, and the flames were quite high. And if you look at the damage to the wall, it's got potential to go further, more so with the rubbish being stacked against that door. One melted wheelie bin, but its potential for destruction far outweighed its mundane origins. It was just such a simple fire which laid waste an entire shopping complex at Maidstone in Kent last July. A similar bin was set alight, igniting a parade of shops and then another hypermarket, this time Tesco's. Well, this, this was taken about um, six minutes past midnight. Um, and you can see that this is the single shop units here. Um, they're, they're well alight. And the fire's already entered Tesco's roof space. This is the, the rear of the chemist. Um, you can see that now that the roof's actually gone, um, the fire's vented itself now. It's one of the most severe fires I've, I've actually attended, um, and the most worrying uh, because of the way the fire actually spread. Um, there wasn't a great deal that we could actually do to prevent the fire from spreading. Once again, there was a history of planning battles when the store was built only five years earlier. Once again, the fire brigade asked that sprinklers be installed. Once again, their advice went unheeded. We recommended that sprinklers be installed throughout the building, um, which is normal for anything of that sort of scale. To what extent were you disappointed that, that Tesco chose to ignore those recommendations? Um, well, unfortunately, uh, we, well, we were disappointed, but unfortunately we don't have a statutory ability to enforce the installation of that sort of protective measure. Um, and so um, we are, I suppose, to some extent philosophical. After 25 fire crews had fought for six hours, firemen finally entered the wrecked Tesco store. As investigations got underway, both sides of the great fire safety debate were claiming this blaze as evidence for their views. If you should be the one to discover a fire, don't panic. Companies like Sainsbury's and Tesco concentrate on fire detection systems and staff training like this video. Some experts point to the recent fires as evidence that early alarms and good staff training will guarantee the most important outcome. But everyone in the building will escape safely. At Tesco and Sainsbury's, everyone did. But those who feel the law is flimsy also claim these big fires are a warning to us all. These buildings do pose a particular type of risk. And I think whether it's government or insurers or developers, eventually they'll be bound to take notice because nobody either the developers or the uh, public and the community at large can afford to see so, uh, destruction on uh, potentially such a massive scale with all the uh, environmental threat that that also adds. Shoppers at an Asda superstore. Asda stores, unlike some Tesco and Sainsbury shops, do have automatic sprinkler systems. The law does not insist that the owners fit them to every new supermarket, though many fire brigades and local councils think they should but sprinklers are not the only issue. At the Tesco fire, the problems went much deeper than that. 
and they raise awkward questions about safety at such shopping centres. Unpublished investigation reports show that the building's safety was compromised by questionable design and construction methods. Buildings tend to be constructed um, in order to uh, protect themselves from fire within, if I can put it that way. Detection systems and so on work within the building. The fire started external to the building and got into the roof very quickly. That was the first thing. The second thing is simply that the roof construction itself literally assisted the spread of fire throughout the totality of the, uh, of the building area. Confidential reports obtained by World in Action show that a fire was started deliberately at around 11 p.m. in a plastic bin full of paper. Flames leapt six feet to ignite the wooden underside of a canopy, spreading through the hollow roof into a newsagent's. By now, a passerby had rung the fire brigade, but none of the automatic alarms had yet gone off. In the next 30 minutes, the fire engulfed a parade of shops, beating off fire crews, mystified that the dividing walls were not stopping it. In fact, the fire had three different ways to bypass the walls. The fire spread between roof battens, along flammable felt, and along a wooden rail running the length of the false roof. In 45 minutes, the flames had got past five firewalls and into the false roof above Tesco. There were no sprinklers, and the timbers here were unable to withstand the heat collapsing inwards. The report adds, The possibility of rapid undetected fire spread and subsequent early roof and ceiling collapse brings into question the safety of shoppers and staff. Tesco has issued writs against the builder, the architect and the local council. Tesco say all their stores comply with safety law. The safety of our customers and staff is of paramount importance to us. Another large single-storey building, this time a food processing plant in Hereford. Last September, a machinery fire started at one end of the works. Once again, those inside got out alive, but the day would still end in tragedy. Just so fast, you know, you're one minute you could be looking at part of the building and it was clear, the next minute there was flames licking out the windows, smoke billowing out. It didn't matter what measures we took to combat the fire. It just seemed to have no effect at all. It just kept spreading towards us. And eventually the whole of the roof and the whole of the building was engulfed and eventually we lost the building. The spread of it was you know, amazing. We had never seen anything like that. From a thin whisk of smoke in one minute to thick black smoke within about 10 minutes, you know, completely engulfing the building. Have you ever seen a fire like that before? Never, no. God forbid, and it never will again. Um, it was, uh, it was by far and away the worst that I've ever attended. And that's in 22 years. Two firemen were sent into the building to assess the damage. The fire was apparently far away. Eight minutes later, they were in trouble. The fire had roared through an empty roof space, trapping them. Because there was no barrier in the roof to stop the flames and no sprinkler system, the blaze was impossible to control. Not even the bravest rescue attempts could save them. An inquest into the deaths of the two firefighters was held in Hereford last month. After hearing the evidence, the Hereford and Worcester coroner is demanding a change in the law. I think the lives of these two firemen probably would have been saved if sprinklers had been fitted. It would have given them time to look after themselves and get out to safety. I've written to the Department of the Environment recommending that they change the law to make sprinklers compulsory in this situation because I think it would save lives in the future and it might well have saved these two. From the wreckage of Chichester Sainsbury's, a new store is emerging. It'll open in the autumn and this time it will have sprinklers. But the company has not been fully converted to the sprinkler campaign. Neither has Tesco. For the moment, nor has the DOE. Its fire scientists insist that sprinklers are not necessary to fulfill the basic requirement of law, getting people out of buildings before fire catches them. But the minister says all of this might change. Certain concerns have been raised with us about a number of recent fires, and of course you'll not be surprised. Uh, we are looking at that with the fire research station. Uh, we're looking in to see whether there need to be further changes made in the building regulations. The nature of buildings is constantly changing. To critics, the way in which big buildings are planned is a cumbersome process in which they have to satisfy far too many people. Among the targets are the fire brigade, 
Last year, Michael Hasseltine invited a task force from private industry to draw up plans for change. Their unpublished report says the fire brigade should lose its powers to insist on safety measures. They would repeal the Fire Precautions Act, under which the brigade certify buildings safe. Instead, local councils or private consultants could do so. But power would lie with the Department of Environment. We take the view that... ...point is seeing whether one government...